everybody, welcome back behind the bar with me this evening. Um, this beer review, we're going to do, I think this is the first time I've done a beer from this brewery on the channel. We are doing Side Project Noir du Fermier. I'm pretty excited about this. Got the pleasure of going down to this release. This is Blend One of this beer, the first time they released it. Um, and we went down, I went down to uh, the release uh, a week or two ago um, for this and got my allotment and brought them back. And I've been dying to pop this one open and drink it. So for those that don't know, uh, Noir de Fermier is a dark farmhouse ale in which the robust yet dry malt bill is balanced with the brightness, depth, and rustic character of wild Bratetomyces and Lacto found on our family's Missouri farm. Uh, this farm ale was fermented in and aged in red wine and bourbon barrels for several months before naturally conditioned in this bottle. Uh, my understanding is the bourbon barrels that they used for this were um, basically... Uh, used to do black and wild before and then were used for this beer. So let's get it popped open um, and get it into a glass. Good hiss on that bottle. Good, good hiss. Um, get it into a glass and see what we think. Uh, proper glassware. Side project. Ooh, a little foamage there. But let's get this in. We are sharing this this evening, so I will pour a glass for guests. For the guest, and then I'll pour myself some. Let's see what we think. So this is base. The base for this beer is SDF, so Saison de Fermier, um, that they then did as a black Saison and put in these barrels. So holding it up to the light, um, pitch pitch black. It's kind of got that. Um, Saison like bubbly almost like champagne like carbonation on it really just It looks like you'd pour a soda out that kind of carbonation I mean poured out about a finger finger and a half and it's Dissipated pretty quickly no real alcohol legs to speak of or anything like that um, or lacing. This is 7% ABV But yeah, it looks killer in the glass um, Like I said, it just looks like black almost looks like a stout well actually it looks like pitch black coca-cola just because of like the, the carbonation and what looks almost looks like a soda but it's like that champagne -y kind of carbonation um yeah looks amazing in the glass let's see what it smells like yeah it smells um tart sweet i mean you're picking up the tartness from the from the base beer um you're getting the red wine barrels for sure like a huge sweet red wine kind of smell Getting a little hint of the sweetness, I think, from the bourbon barrels that, that that Black and Wild came out of. Like I said, just you're you're getting a little bit of the Brett, a little bit of that funk, um, kind of that horse blanket, just a little bit, but then you goes rolls right into the tartness, red wine barrel sweetness. Smells killer. Smells really good. I will be honest, this is at cellar temperature. I didn't really get this terribly cold. I poured it, pulled it straight out of the cellar, never went into the fridge with it. And it's, it's cold. It's probably about 60 in there. 60, 57 to 60 probably. Yeah, but it smells killer. Can't wait to see what it tastes like. Cheers. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's really, this is going to sound odd. It's really simple, but kind of complex at the same time. Um, wow. Wow very tart um like a very like tart saison farmhouse um <clears throat> with that lacto you're getting that lacto tart um not vinegar but you know puckering note but not terribly it's not overly like sour um and then it goes right into kind of that that red wine like those red wine like I'm trying to think of something similar, like almost like con consecration from Russian River, almost like that note, that deep red wine sour note, and then you get the sweetness at the end um, from the bourbon barrels. Not a ton of the bourbon, mostly the red wine. 
That's a great beer. Um, I almost like the, is it, is it sits on my tongue? It's almost like the red wine, you get like these cherry notes. Um, just like those types of dark red fruits. Um, and then it rolls into almost like this like chocolatey finish from the bourbon notes um, that almost just kind of feels like, it almost feels chocolatey for me as it's sitting on my tongue. And it's not terribly dry, like my wa mouth is watering after each drink. So I guess it kind of finishes like that tart dryness, but it's like your saliva just goes like just gushes. But yeah, I mean the base beer, I think this is definitely better than the base beer. Um, I don't get a lot of like the dark roasted malts maybe a little bit on the finish. Um, but for me, it's just, there's, there's that Brett funk, the lacto tartness, and then just the red wine and a little bit of the, the barrel at the end. I think it would have been a lot more bourbon bar barrel forward if they would have used those barrels fresh and done the blend off of that instead of using barrels that black and wild had been in, which is my understanding. I could be wrong, but based on what they had posted, um, that's my understanding of this beer. This is really, like I said, it, it it goes across your tongue in a simple way it doesn't there's no real big peaks and valleys it's just this tartness into this red wine cherry um, into this like sweet finish that um, is complex and what it does it has a lot of different flavors in it this is really good terribly drinkable for seven percent you're not getting any alcohol or anything like that um, the carbonation is perfect on this. Like I said, it's very kind of that champagne effervescence at first. I mean, it's gone away completely, so it's drinking, you know, just like a good um, tart sour um, or, or Saison. You know, that, that carbonation kind of goes away. You, it's not lacking in any way. Um, it's great. For those that don't know, um, you know, Side Project releases pretty much most of their beers minus some of their white label stuff. Excuse me. Um on they give notice this one was about they give a week notice on this they were going to re do a release on a friday at noon i think or four maybe four it was four o'clock and that um and then it's just a big bottle share beforehand if you are close enough that you can drive to one going to a side project event is great for the bottle share beforehand alone and just the camaraderie and having fun with beer people um it's amazing. I had a great time. The last one was probably one of the best ones we've had so far. Um, sometimes they don't give as much notice. They'll give 24 hours or they'll do a surprise. We're opening in an hour and we're doing this. Um, or we're open now and we're doing this. So it's kind of cool. It's better than, you know, people being able to plan and bring mules and all that kind of stuff, which kind of bums everybody out. So, um, but no, this is beer. Great beer. Seek it out. Um, I mean, this is an A-plus beer for me. Um, I'm trying to think of what I would change about this. Maybe just... For the complexity and, and comparing it to something like Black and Wild that had a little bit more bourbon um, aspects to it, that would be the only thing I'd change maybe, is add a little bit more of that. But other than that, this beer is killer. I mean, this is a $98.99 for me. I mean, if it's untapped, 4.8 or 4.9 out of 5. I love this beer. Um, some people will probably wish it was more sour. Some people probably wish it was less. For me, it's right in the middle. It's very balanced. It's damn tasty. So we'll leave it there. Um... Yeah, it's fun. I've been trying to do some stuff, stuff that's a little bit more local. I know this one's harder to get, being side project, but it's local in the Midwest. Um, I've gone to the last few releases, and this is the first one I decided to do a review because I got a few bottles of this one. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed. There's not very many reviews for any side project out there online, so hope you like seeing something from this brewery. If you don't know anything about it, look it up. They make insane beers. I mean, some of the best stouts on earth are their Derivation Series, Second Candle, Fruited Sours. I mean, they've replaced, in my opinion, Jester King as the king of the Fruited Sours domestically. I think it's them and Casey now, and I actually like a lot of theirs better than a lot of the Casey stuff, so um, they're killer. So trade for it. They trade crazy, um, but it's worth it, in my opinion. So... Um, yeah, 98, 99. I'll see where I end up on the final grade, but right in that range. And uh, thanks for coming behind the bar. Thanks for the likes, subscribes, and comments, guys. And until next time. Cheers.